Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. The Strauss Historical Society is dedicated to the history of the Lazarus Strauss family. They are from southwestern Germany and they were a Jewish family who emigrated, some of whom emigrated to this country in the middle 1850s. The original member of the family who came to this country was Lazarus. He came in 1852 and immediately went to Georgia where he became a pushcart peddler. And at the end of the Civil War, because of all the horrible things that happened there, he and his family moved to New York where they started a China crockery porcelain company and they lived in New York City and became prosperous. By 1896, they were sole owners of Macy's department store, and they were the ones who were responsible for building the wonderful store on 34th Street, which opened in 1902. The sons of Lazarus, who were Isidore, Nathan, and Oscar. Isidore became the merchant in the family. He was the oldest son, and he worked with his father, and he and and Nathan and Isidore together were a remarkable pair. What one lacked, the other had. And they're together responsible for the enormous growth of Macy's and then later with Abraham and Strauss as well. And then the youngest sibling was Oscar. He was twice minister to Turkey, to Constantinople, and then ambassador to Turkey when that became an ambassadorial position. And later he was Secretary of Commerce and Labor. It was one department. And I became their family historian through really a fluke. But it's a wonderful fluke, and it's one that's been a happy association for more than 20 years. So I put an ad in the New York Times saying that I would do research for people, and one of the people who called was Bob Strauss, who was in California, but his family had owned Macy's for 100 years, and their papers were locked within Macy's because of a 1986 very bitter leverage buyout. So the short version is that he hired me to help get his papers out, and I was successful in doing that, and then we had all these papers and we had to find out what was in them because we had papers dating back to Napoleon's time and we started a project and it just has grown from there. Isidore and Ida Strauss had been in Europe for the winter. They went in January as was their custom and they would go to uh, various spas for in those days what they called the cure and they would visit their various relatives and they would do some shopping because much of the family stayed in Germany and then they decided to come home it was just the right time it wasn't any reason that they came on Titanic other than it was time to come home and that was the ship going at the time the famous story is that when the ship was sinking women and children were allowed into the lifeboats first um, there weren't enough people getting into the lifeboats and so Isidore was offered a spot in a lifeboat. But he said, no, there are still women and children aboard, I can't leave yet. And so he stepped out of the lifeboat and she, seeing that he did, also stepped out. And so they died together. And this is a story that has captured the imagination of people everywhere. When James Cameron, Cameron was making his movie Titanic, they wanted information about Isidore and Ida Strauss because they were aiming to uh, be as authentic as they could in their depiction of, of the various uh, facts that they wove around their fictional story. And so he asked us about the family. The owners of the Titanic Museum attraction in Pigeon Forge, uh, Tennessee, gave the Strauss family and the Strauss historical this lovely crystal model of Titanic as a way of saying thank you for the loan of our various artifacts to their exhibition. This is a letter written by Jesse's wife, Irma. They were aboard the America, and they were going to Europe, and she did not know that Titanic had sunk. And on April 17th, she wrote a letter back to her two sons who were at home, saying that the captain woke them and brought them on board to see an iceberg, not realizing that her in-laws had just died because of an iceberg. This is a small piece of the family. This center on the trunk is Lazarus Strauss, who was the oldest of 14. And he's the man who came here in 1852. And so this is a tree of his descendants. And then as you follow each branch of this tree, you can see the children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren. 
And the way it works is that each generation, no matter where they're positioned on the tree, is a separate color. So you can find all of the first cousins, all of the second cousins. There are two things that, that, that I could say about this. I mean, one is that you should never be afraid to try something new. You should be open to experiences because you find that wonderful things happen like this. And the other is that there's really no stupid questions. You just keep asking questions and if someone says no, you just bump up against it and try again. But eventually you find something that's really interesting or wonderful and you just keep playing with it. But uh, I think the key is just to be open and not afraid to try things. There's nothing terrible about failing except if you don't learn from that and move on. When people ask me how this happened and how it evolved and, and what happens next, I, I often say that I feel as though I'm tubing down a river and I bump into a rock and that takes me in a different direction and then I bump into another rock and that takes me into a different direction. Because every day somebody contacts me and asks a question I don't know the answer to and I have to research that and next thing you know there's a project.